Yo, 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 this is Afro, a.k.a. All Flows Reach Out, and you're listening to Built For This Network. Yes, sir. From the building, they say, wow. is trending for the holiday season located 1252 Burnham Ave in Calumet City. Being black owned and operated with new items weekly in store and even online. And with over 50,000 followers online you can't miss out. Sales going on till 2022 like jogging suits, hoodies, t-shirts, Jordan Craig, smoke rides, crisp, sweaters and so much more. So beat the lines and order online from Style Guys 1252 Burnham Ave in Calumet City. Contact them today at 708-801-9481 Again, 708-801-9481. Or check them out from Tuesday to Saturday from noon to 7 p.m. Or Sundays from noon to 5 p.m. Style Guys, 1252 Burnham Ave in Calumet City. Life, fashion, style. Follow some of the newest styles by Style Guys in Calumet City. Lock in the Style Guys on IG or look them up, thestyleguys.com. Gone wild. Feeling myself, but I stay in my lane. Yeah. I know you thinking you nice, but you sounding the same. Yeah. He need to switch up the flow, but I know that he ain't. Nah. Shit. Maybe he won't to, it probably can't. Nah. Sure. He talk a lot, but ain't saying a word. No, nope. 16 sounding like he be lacing his herb. <laughs> when you rock, told me time to just focus and spit. Yeah. Yeah. Quit worrying about the niggas abandoning shit. Yeah. I drop broken, and they told me quit biting your tongue. Yeah. The way you writing sounded like you forgot where you from. Yeah. Say you from the hood, but you sound like a minister now. Yeah, yeah. I can tell. Take it there, but shit, I just like how this sound. I should address some of this drama, but Latin it go. Shit, I can't keep playing with you niggas. I'm getting too old. Nah. The last words Bone told me I never forget. Yeah. Quit playing with this music and do it to death. Shit, I came back. Listening to the end of the bench podcast on Built for This Network, hosted by my man H. Rap B. It's your man H. Rap B coming at you live from the direct. This is the end of the bench podcast with uh, the wise guy BJ. How you feeling? Yes, all right, all right. With this episode, what well, this show is called. H rap and B. I'm H rap. He's B. E I. But this is a podcast. Remember, you can always get this later on Spreaker.com with Built for This Network on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Aha Radio, Google Podcasts, Amazon, or wherever you choose to download your favorite podcast. We always salute our family with the Pollard family the Williams family, and everybody entered to connect it, no matter what, what our relation is. We salute them. We send respect to our ancestors and love and respect to all of our listeners. Thank you. If you are currently listening, you are via YouTube or Facebook, I need you to hit the like button. You know, just like when you see a picture you like, hit the like. If you're on YouTube, hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way we will get involved. You will get involved and keep us involved. Now, as usual, this is a show in which me and my only son in the history of the world are having a conversation. Huh? In the air. <laughs> and <Cayette. laughs> 
uh, we have conversations, conversation between a 51 year old man and a 28 year old man talking about the world and how we see it and how they see it. First of all, we're going to say big ups to Teresa, little mama, Rucker, and we're going to say what's up to T.T. Phyllis is in the building. And we got a bunch of people probably in Facebook. Please, if you want to be seen, announce it. I will announce you as well. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, participation is truly appreciated. How's your week been going, young fella? It's been two weeks since I sent you. DJ Purplelicious is in the building. Much love. Been dope, man. Uh, you and Nut had a show yesterday. We went in there. They rocked the joint. Real nice salute um, to. Got to get the name of the people we went on team today. We had a show with Big Damo too. That's um, that's Jew and Nuts artists up under them. So we got mm. the wise guy. They the heads. They their own artists. They're not a group. They're their own artists, but as well. They got um, one artist up under them. Chicago style Wu Tang Clan. I heard you was the new uh, backup dancer, but we ain't gonna get into that. Hey man, if it pay, I'm there. Hey, <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that, boy. You be at the bur the, the burlesque show with the male trans. No, if it's paying uh, for my yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's what I'm saying. I, I sit out there and see a t-shirts. Hey man, <laughs> I don't want no free check. I don't want you dressed up like no woman doing this. Boy. No. <laughs> home yet. That's all that's going down. Uh, yeah, man, it's been a pretty interesting week for me. Started PT today. For those who don't know, it's physical therapy. You know, some people might be off. But, uh, yeah, man, it sucks. Man. Yeah, I, 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 I imagine. It sucks. I need a new back. Anybody got extra back laying around, send it to your boy. At H-Rap underscore B, hit me up. You got your extra back. Go for me for the, uh, the back of y'all to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I should put this up. You know, I'm gonna put this on screen just in case you want to uh, donate to the Brian Williams. I need a back fund. I, I put this on the screen just in case anybody want to uh, donate to the Brian Williams. I need a back fund. There you go. No, no. What's the? It's, it's dollar sign, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you show you how much I use. <laughs> There you go. There in a certain amount. I want to donate to the uh, Brian Williams. I need a new back fund. There you go, right there. Donate enough. We we'll send out a uh, a free T shirt. Not to know it, just a free T shirt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a free T shirt. I like just, that. I like that. That's my name. I should put that on the shirt. It ain't nothing on it. It's, it's just, just a T shirt. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I used to say on the old show when I used to do sports? I used to be like, man, tune in this week. I'm giving away a million dollars. Then people come in and be like, if you win, that's one million, that's one dollar for the next million years. Yeah. Gotcha. I got you. <laughs> and I'm sending the cash out. That's right. With that being said, tonight, as I said, we talk about generations. Tonight, we are going to talk about family and things of that nature, you know, how people in this community view things in regards to marriage. You know, one of the biggest misnomers in the in the world today is black people don't get married. Now y'all damn business. We don't really tell y'all our business. So y'all think we don't get married, but then that's cool. I don't care. Um, 50% of the, more than 50% of the marriage in the United States of America today and then divorce. So how are you judging me? Because I got a baby mama, you got a wife, and at the end of the day, uh, half of y'all gonna a be. Good chance, it's a good chance that this this ain't even gonna last. Yeah, this ain't gonna last. But that's neither here nor there. We're not gonna get into it. Um, I want to know. Let's start off at the top. Your generation. Uh, how do you guys feel about getting married? Um, my generation on marriage. This. When you said, oh, you know what? Let me let me re- hit, hit the reset on that. At the end of the day, when I was growing up, let's let's start there. So let's start okay. right there. When I was growing up, getting married was a, a thing. You know, you had this thing called shotgun wedding. And what is a shotgun wedding was this? A shotgun wedding was this. You get somebody pregnant. And pretty much their parents and grandparents got together and forced you to marry that person because that was the thing, that was the right Christian thing to do. 
the older I've gotten, people have gotten away from it because people start making their own decisions. They they, they stop listening to Big Mama and, and Granddaddy and stop listening to their parents and they start living life the way they want to see it. A lot of people got married, a lot of people didn't. But I want to know how you guys see how it has been a trickle down society wide. Let me know how you feel about it and you and your peers. Okay, well, me personally, this is just my opinion, and then I'll tell you exactly how it's viewed. Mm-hmm. Okay, me personally, I think it's one of the most sacred things ever. And well, you, were raised, you were raised right, boy. Mm-hmm. I honestly do because I'm one of those people that. I seen my aunt get married, seen a couple of um, cousins get married. I was in a couple of weddings and I shed a tear at their weddings. Like, man, this is beautiful. <laughs> oh, my fault. I, I thought it was beautiful. In a and, I, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I honestly plan to get married one day. But yeah, I think it's beautiful. I think it's sacred. I think it's something that they need to continue, 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 continue. I feel like we need to figure out a way to shorten up that 50% divorce um, rate. Uh, rating. And I think it's it's the greatest thing that could ever happen. One of, at least. The way my generation views it, I think they believe, they believe that, but 99% of my generation does it for the wrong reasons. They think it's the thing to do right now. Mm-hmm. Because, you know what's crazy? I was watching uh, this movie uh, just today. Um, earlier today, I was watching the movie uh, I Think I Love My Wife. And one of the scenes, he was talking to the lady. And she was like... Oh, with Slap Rock? I mean, yeah. Crip Rock? Yes, sir. <laughs> and one of the scenes, he said, you don't want to be married. You want the wedding. You want the bells and the whistles and all that. Mm-hmm. You don't want the... You don't want the trials and tribulations to go with this. And she kind of looked at him crazy. And that's a perfect example of right now. People are just doing it to say, I did it. My girl got on the, the $20,000 ring and this and that and this. It's like, and then you look at them and like, y'all are not really happy. You, you, you're you not even happy with the person you with. And I know you're not happy because every five minutes you're dragging them through Facebook or you're dragging them on Twitter and oh he ain't doing nothing for the kids but you turned around and married I, I mean I just personally don't understand it and then and then honestly right after my generation around like Bria Cantrell and them I honestly don't see marriage ever being a thing with them mm, please explain so I'm one of the I, I, I'm not that old, but I'm an old head in my job. Everybody I work with is um, around the age of like 21, 19. It it always varies in that age. So I was like, man, when I was in high school, you was (laughs) still on the playground somewhere. And I just hear them, how they communicate with their significant others. And it's like, because I even ask them, I'm like, man, because when you send me the questions, I asked them, and they was like, "Married man, I'm getting married to these these skanks and ooh, I'm like, wow." <laughs> so I don't, I honestly don't even believe. If I could make a prediction, I don't believe marriage even be a thing in like ten years. Um. Uh, well, that's funny that you don't think that. Um. Uh, damn, that's tough. Hard huh? because even. Even when Big Mike got married and me and Vincent was their age, me, Vince, and Love Mike was their age, we at least said, like, oh, man, it'd probably be cool to be married. They flat out, no. Nah. <laughs> I'm out here. I'm partying. What Snoop Dogg say? We don't love them. Like, I promise you, I don't see marriage. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But in 10 years, I can't see. We got the homie Joe from Houston in the building. Salute to Joe. He another Williams. Uh, your aunt seems to be asking no kids. I don't know if she asked you if you have any kids or you want any kids. Or... Let's lay down he he going to have some kids. He going to have a son because my daddy's blood is on that name. <laughs> So, 
you know, but yeah. uh, he don't have I mean, a key. To answer the question, mm-hmm. yeah. I Nothing think it's now. very sacred, and I think it's something that needs to continue, continue for many, many, many years. But as my my people of my generation, it's a 50-50 thing. Like, yeah, some of they're doing it, but it's for the wrong reasons, and in my opinion, don't even do it. Because I honestly, and the reason I one of the reasons I feel so strongly about marriage is because I believe in soul ties. I feel like if I'm I'm not a very religious person, but I do feel I do believe in the Huh? I'm a, a, <laughs> I do believe it's not a law I gotta work on. <laughs> I believe as a God, and when you put yourself before God and tell him I want to be with this person for the rest of my life, you need to be prepared to be with this person and work out whatever you need to work out. And mm. a lot of people like in my generation ain't even close to that step. So what you're saying is if you have a problem, give it to God. Pretty much. I was just saying, all right. That's what's up. I got uh Teddy, TT Teddy in the building. I got my man DJ Mad Nice in the building. You know, um, I don't know if it's a you know what I think it is, man. I don't know if it's a young people thing. Because a lot of people in my generation got married. Like I was talking to uh, little mama today, and um not she hate to be called that. But uh, uh, and she's like, I don't know if I'm gonna get married again. I got married young, blah, blah, blah. you know. We were just having a conversation, and um, people, I don't know, man. See, okay, how about this? How about we look at the history of marriage? A marriage originally in the European setting, in the setting, you know, the culturistic situation that we're in. Even though I don't know if culturistic is a word, but it just sounds like a word. So it's gonna be one tonight. This Euro state of mind that we living in now, magic is a business. Let's just be honest, man. It used to be two powerful men, and one of them had a daughter, one of them had a son, and to carry on their wealth, kind of like that Wu Tang song. My seeds will marry his seeds and marry his seed. That's how we keep Wu Tang money all up in the family, and that's what they thought. It was a business run. You had a goat, herd, goat herder and a sheep herder, and they got together and they had animals, they had livestock. And things of that nature. So some cultures, like the the, uh, I think it's the Hindu or the Indian or Hindi Indian Hindu, I think they have arranged marriages. And believe it or not, like eighty five to ninety percent of those marriages last. Period. They never separate. So I don't know if it's a culture thing. I don't know if it's. I'm, I believe a lot of the people with with issues with marriage is because, as you stated. People are using marriages as senior, senior proms. I had a big marriage when I was younger, so I'm going to go ahead and get married now. And I, don't, I know I can't hardly stand your ass, but we got 42 kids together, so I might as well be with you. And then you just hate that person for into perpetuity. You know what I mean? But it, I think it is, I think, you know, even though I never, man, man, never mind. But I think it is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't going to do all that. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't doing all that. But uh, it's important. I think I do think it's important for for the structural advancement of a community because mm-hmm. it is the first structure your child will see. But see, here's the thing, though, and you can let me know how you feel about this. People don't. We're so busy. We're so quick to jump into bed with somebody and then have a baby with them, with people that we don't even know and or like. You know, how often do you communicate with this person? How often do you and that person laugh? If you stressed out, is that the person you turn to? If you still turn to your homies, maybe you should get married because you should be able to in either way, ladies or gentlemen. Maybe that's why you should maybe you shouldn't get married. If you call this person, or if that person calls you and you go, <laughs> don't marry that person. And I what I've noticed is there's a lot of people in our community, this is my opinion. A lot, a lot of people don't even like themselves. So how the, how the hell can they love somebody else? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, somebody in dark group, he said, they said, if you don't know yourself, you can't love nobody. And, you know, it's this actually from a Chuck D song. If you don't like yourself, you can't love nobody. If you don't know yourself, then you are nobody. It's a real song. It's a song. I mean that that that's a hundred percent real, and I've been preaching that for a good amount of my life. Like I, I'm perfectly okay with being by myself because right. I know who I am, 
and a lot of people don't know who you are or who they are mm-hmm. like I've, and that's why a lot of marriages as well as relationships fail too because at the end of the day you sit around let's say you had a high school sweetheart you've been with that dude since you was a freshman in high school sophomore in high school y'all went to y'all trials and tribulations and after two or three years, or maybe even, yeah, two or three years, y'all broke it off. This is the only person you know, but you didn't take no time to evaluate yourself. Like, what I do is, if I if I finally leave a chick alone, it's like, I evaluate myself. All right, I'm going to sit back for a second. What could I have done to make that situation better? What, what, what could she have done? You know what I'm saying? And then I just, you just learn yourself as you go. A lot of people just go, Oh, I ain't mess with BJ no more. Rob, what you want? And now they were Rob. And then, then when you're done with Rob, you you with Jacob. And it's like you didn't even get a chance to really know what's what's the root of your problem, or the root of who you are, or what even makes you happy. So when you when you go on to the next person, you you like, oh no, I ain't accepting this no more. Because BJ was doing this to me, and I ain't like it. But you didn't. You don't even know what BJ was doing. Cause I could have been bringing you down. I couldn't. I could have been not complimenting you every day, or not taking you out as much as I should have been, or and like you said, even as simple as a as a joke every day. Like, man, you, did you smile all day? How, how, how you feeling? What's your What's your mental health like? A lot of people don't ask those questions. What's name? Is, but we together. It's like, no, man, learn yourself before you ever put yourself out there. And that's why that's why I take it back to the original point. That I made, I mean, yeah, that I made, they're just doing it for all the wrong reasons. Like you said, oh, we've been together this long, so we might as well do it. We got 47 kids, and why not? My man, DJ Band and I just said accepting each other's flaws and working to build each other up, as well as keeping a line of communication of the only way of marriage. But self happiness is the key. Exactly. That's exactly what you just said. Shout out to DJ Man. I thank you for the participation, my good brother. Yeah, so that's, that's the thing, man. That's what you should be able to do. When you're dealing with somebody, ask yourself that you know this is this is something that you need to realize. I won't, I won't, you know, I've never said this to you, but um every every five years you're gonna be a different person. Mm-hmm. You can take me when you were what you 28 now, almost 29. So let's say when you were 23, I'm not the person you were when you were 23 years old. No. I'm not the person you was when you were 17 years old. Every five years, you become a different person because you have different life experiences. You may read a different book. You may listen to a different person. You may meet somebody. You, you're always constantly elevating. So people need to realize the person you start dating and smiling, skinny and grinning in their face, they may not be that person. And then one thing that could potentially help you along the way in regards to getting married is this. Every year, do a January 1st of every year. Email yourself five things that you didn't know January 1st. Please. Share with that person. Like if you're with somebody, hey, this is what this is what I've turned into. Like I used to be I used to be 50 pounds heavier. I used to have this cool ass beard, you know. I used to have it. no, I'm cool. I'm, I'm chilling out, tripping. But you know, just <laughs> not, <laughs> you know, just some things about you that you've noticed that you improved on. The reason you do that is because when you do that, that puts you on point to add and find more things to next year, and then let that person know this is what's in store. This is what I did, and I'm moving forward. I got these things in my bag of tricks. And then this is what this is the next stage in my bag of tricks. That person email you mail us to that person, that person emailed it to you. And then set like this is what your grandma used to say. My mom. <coughs> she didn't say Blush. that. But uh this is what she used to say. Uh, this is what you want to do. Every six, and I told you, I told you and your sister this. I said, write down and write down what you want. Six things that you want in six months. Twelve things that you want in twelve months. Eighteen things that you want in eighteen months, and walk those things down. That's what your grandma used to tell me all the time. 
you know, and so if you do that in regards to relationships, you at that point will consistently evolve and you chase something at all times. It, it doesn't make a difference what what somebody else knows about you is about what you know about you. If you don't know nothing about you, then pfft, it's a wrap, Jack. And you're gonna struggle with that. Period. You there? You look like no, I'm, I'm definitely listening. I thought she went to sleep, Jack. No, <laughs> right line, man. no, man, I'm 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 listening. Okay, thoughts on that, or are we moving forward? We got uh, we got I'm, five I'm, I mean, You definitely need to do that, and I and I do that in my cell. I do that in my cell phone right now. Okay, man. That six months thing, like I remember, uh, man, I love you know I love talking to Jew. Jew mm-hmm. does that too. Jew told me a long time ago. Uh, me and him was just talking. And he was like, man, what you do is another thing you can do. Because I told him exactly what you told me to do. Another thing you told me to do is he said, take you a dry erase marker and get you. He said, you got a couple of mirrors in your house, don't you? He was like, I was like, yeah. He was like, I know you do because you what? You dress like it. All us do. So we got to look at ourselves before we leave the house. So he said, what you do is you write your goals down in your mirrors. If you go to Jew house right now in his bathroom mirror and in his room mirror and his living room mirror, he got stuff written down. He said, the reason I do it like that is I'm constantly seeing this. I can't lie to, I can lie to everybody in the world. Can't lie to myself. <laughs> so I'm forced to say, I want to get my credit score 20 more points up. Let me figure this out because it's constantly in my face. So no, I got you. For sure. You got Monica Lawrence in the building. What's up, Monica? I got Yonka Wong in the building, and I got we got Big Chris in the building. Uh, yeah, man, it's it's about evolution. If you don't evolve, you can stay the same person. You can't be happy staying the same person unless you're perfect. Now, if you're perfect, everybody knows you, you know, you know, you know, like like me. I got cool ass haircuts. You you got that thing on your head. No, it's, it, it is what you it said is. Perfect. I'm pretty close. Allegedly. I'm, I'm perfect cousin. Yeah, allegedly. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's move on to the next thing. Women with children. When I was young, man, and, you know, people used to kind of stay away from women with children. I mean, it was something that was taught to you. I can remember, I'm not going to say any names. I remember, I know somebody who had three children. She met a man and and and, and her family was like, hey, that's a good dude. That's a good dude. And I knew somebody in a family who he was a man and he met a woman with three children. He was a damn fool. Why are you messing with that woman with three kids? Now, the same family members were praising this other dude. But so it's always been an interesting situation with women, with children. Uh, we are in the age, we're in the baby mama age, you know. You know, <laughs> super baby mama age. Super baby mama age. So I'm rare. baby mama, you know. That's my baby mama. That's my baby mama. That's my baby mama. That's my baby. Whoa, that's all of them. But that's a whole another situation. How do you guys look at women with children? Again, I'm gonna give you my perspective, and then I'm gonna give you the world and people of my generation's perspective. Mine, it's a number on it. <laughs> it's, it's on it so far. I can go with this. I got a two max. <laughs> Like, oh, no. It, what if it's three? What if it's three? What if it's I three? can't do it. So I'm I'm a, a, a Are you telling you? me? You telling me this? You meet Susie Q tomorrow. Oh, she, ah, ah, she, she eye candy. Then you start rapping with her. She ear candy. And then she wildly intelligent. A whole lot of fun. Blah, blah, blah. She got this slick gig. She got a whole get down together. And you say, how many kids you got? Three? You going to go, oh, hell no. That's it, man. That's one heck of a situation. Yeah. <laughs> I, in this generation, I ain't found that. So until then, <laughs> no. <laughs> You're a horrible person. Who's, it, your, who's your daddy? It, it, until, oh. it, that's one heck of a scenario. And until then, if I meet Susie Q and she got, if there's 10 things on the list and she got nine and a half, I'm going to have to suck it up. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, finish, man. No, man. But no, Mr. my man is two. But yeah, my man, yeah, <laughs> yeah, my, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm a rarity. So 
Because people look, look at look, me. Look, nobody like, care you ain't got no kids. Move on. They be like, hey, how many kids you got? Don't worry about it. <laughs> I got nine kids. You just don't know. It's, you only know about two. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I used to be out late some nights. There it goes. I used to have to go with BBJ house. What did nigga have for Christmas? Oh, he went to the uh, store. <laughs> I went to the store for four hours. <laughs> what are you doing with the boxes in your car? No, I'm just playing. Go ahead. But yeah, my, my limit is four. Four kids. Oh, I mean, I mean, not four, two, 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 two. Yeah, my limit. I'm sorry. I was thinking about a scenario that I, I was once in. I'm sorry. <laughs> but mine running a million miles per hour right now. Yeah, yeah. Like, get it together. Only reason, it together. only reason my mind is running a million miles per hour, and, and not to be funny, I've rarely run into a woman that didn't have kids. So my entire dating life, I've always ran into somebody with some kids and it's like so everybody just <laughs> I feel left out at this point <laughs> so yeah so my limit is two so I, I mean I don't look down at it but I no that's a lie because I cannot lie to you I, I'm gonna real time I'm going to keep it a foul wow. I got a ratio calendar. I got a ratio thing, right? So, nah, and this is no disrespect to anybody I know. I promise you. I promise you. If you take offense to it, that's on you. But I'm telling you, this is no disrespect to nobody. But if you got four kids and four baby daddies, that's a bad look. I don't care. I don't care how you feel. I don't, I don't know. It's some ain't some ain't right right there. Something's not right. I can come up with a scenario with that too, but we we, we I want to hear personally. Proceed, proceed. Huh? It's like no one on earth can make that make sense to me. I can, but but you have to be you have to be a little little older. I guess. And then, I mean, okay. and then, this, and the reason, and then watch, the reason. watch, watch me make it make sense. Watch me make it make sense. My homegirl, I ain't gonna say her name. Ain't, ain't everybody ain't, ain't need to be in her business. My homegirl had a baby when she was sixteen years old. She got married. She was twenty. Her husband had a heart attack and died. She met another dude, married him. Dude ended up going to the penitentiary because he was running licks instead of having a job. So that's two. Later on in life. She, I mean, maybe she killing these dudes because her other, other husband croaked too, and then she had a baby dad. I'm just saying. I'm mean, okay in that scenario. I get it, but I, I would. But in, before you was even for to say that, I was about to explain to you why I can't. I can't understand it because from what I see in my generation, these people be having these women have four different baby daddies, and we talking. One little, little BJ is one. Little Bria is oh stair three. step for baby daddies. Yeah, like boom, 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 and it's like you ain't with none of these dudes. You couldn't make this work with four different people, but you decide to give them a kid. But okay, okay, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm we're gonna we gonna cover this. We're gonna go into this. We gonna let's go deeper. Like my man's always let's go deeper. Okay, here's the thing, man. A lot of people, okay, we, we in the black community, let's, let's keep it all the way funky, man. Let's keep it funky. Okay. Like, your black ass wasn't playing. Didn't, we didn't plan to have you. We just sit down one day and go, you know what, Nico? It's time to have BJ. So a lot of times you're doing grown, you're making grown people decisions and not taking grown people precautions. And you think you in love with this person. I mean, everybody, not me. I mean, come on, man. It's only one of me. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, and, and, and things happen. It do. I would say if you are not a responsible T.T. Phillips, T.T. Teddy, born 1965, May, T.T. Phillips, uh, 64 May, 65 Phillips, 11 months apart. Maybe I mean, she did. She had a favorite child. I don't care what they say. They in the chat room. I don't care what they say. Then she had a favorite child. You know, she got it right and then stopped. I mean, everybody can't do it that way. 
two different baby daddies. You know, they, they, different situations, but eh, it's 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 fine out the situation because again, man, let me tell you this, man. You 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 judge people and not the situations, and you might mess out on an awesome person. Just because you made made bad decisions at 17 to 21 or 16, 17 to uh, 25 don't mean from 25 into perpetuity until until you lay down, you won't make 100% good decisions. Find out the situation before you judge somebody, for real. Seriously. No, I mean, I I get it. It, it, I get it. I get that part. Because I would, like you said, at least hear somebody out on their situation. Right. I, I get that part. I get that because I, I get, hey, as a, as my homie Lebron would say, I don't turn down nothing but my collar. Everybody get a, free, a, a fair shot. <laughs> yeah, 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 amen. Everybody get a fair shot. But, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, you yeah, know. No, I, I, I totally get that part. Yeah, I totally get that part. It's just. Just, just some of the things that I see on a day to day basis. Yeah, dealing with see, and then you, you you looking at situations, man. <sighs> I get it, man. You definitely my son, April, and you and and, and the damn allergies kicked up. <clears throat> I'm trying to get out that damn child support. I'm trying to get a refund, but uh, you gotta look at scenarios, man. Oh, uh, yeah, because everybody got a story behind what happened, and like you said, if you're 21 and you think you did. You think you in love, just like you said. Every five years, you transition to be a different person. Exactly. You never know what's the next step gonna be to who you gonna be or who you gonna meet on what the band. But right, well, well, watch just, this. Watch this. When you were sixteen, I remember you. I ain't gonna tell everybody, but uh, I remember you did some stuff that was could have led. Yeah, you yeah. Well. yeah. What are you one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Think about it like this: we kicking on this podcast. I can remember a point. You were probably looking at me with a bricket behind your hand, going, "I could throw this at this." Guy. <laughs> <laughs> so look at that, man. I mean, everybody. You I mean, everybody. Yeah, know. but oh, the only thing I'm saying is this, and you're one hundred percent right. I'm not saying you're wrong. It's just, and I do, and I do, I do what you're saying, but I'm just telling you. It's so hard to do it right now <laughs> because is, the scenario, because the scenarios you run into is so crazy. And then even with even with the even the kid situation, y'all, I don't know how it was. And that's a question for you as well. I don't know how the baby daddy situation was when you were growing up, but now you see these women, they got two or three kids. Okay, cool. But this baby daddy is the killer on 63rd. This baby daddy, the robber over here. And this baby daddy just flat out bitter. And don't none of them like each other. Hey, man, you mind dropping woo woo off the woo woo woo? I'm going to get shot if I go this. <laughs> you mind picking me up from my, my baby daddy house? And it's like, I don't even feel like getting into that. Like, what? See, now, that situation. You can have one baby daddy and yeah. one kid. And I'm yeah, but I would rather deal with one. Like, if I no, got to no, deal no, with I'm it, not dealing with that. No, I I'm understand that. that. I, I get that to the to the fullest. But if, just if, I have, if I did say, you know what, I'm going to lose my mind and I'm going to sacrifice my peace, I'm not doing it for four people <laughs> or three people. If I'm going to sacrifice my peace, I can't call Peanut and them like, we got to go whoop. Four different niggas in four different neighborhoods. No, no, <laughs> that's what I'm not doing. True, true. That's true. all I'm saying. Like some of the things that I have witnessed, it's just it'll blow your mind on how these women mindsets be and how these these younger dudes as fathers they trying to grow up and be the best fathers they can, but a lot of them just be just flat out bitter and want to get into it with me and fight me and it's like bro you know, your daddy got a gun I'm on my fault I'm a square <laughs> I am a I tell people I'm sorry I step over somebody's shoe in the club and buy a drink I don't want no problems I want to go home <laughs> yeah I get it but you know what um 
it, it is a generational thing because I mean, you you had that bit of baby daddy thing when I was coming up. Me, Mike, and Vince, we put we dropped the fifth four B's on a couple guys. Hey, uh, really? I won't fight you because you right. You gonna get jumped? I'm trying to save you. I get that, but it's just it's just a matter of people. When you are dealing with individuals, you must get to know the individual first. Now, if you made the, I'm not dating nobody who dated who dated the super thug. The funny thing is, here go you want to hear something funny? It's a cat. They used to date your mama before I started dating your mama in 1989. He still wants some of these, but he ain't going to run up. You couldn't melt the Negro and spray them on me, but I will put these things on him. But he ain't. He still, he see me. He fake He fake kicking with me. What's up, my boy B? He really hate me. So I get it. So I get it. But, you know, you know who you are and you might be watching. I know you. But, uh, yeah, but you just have to get to know, know the situation, know the person. I If you used to date super thugs, Hey man, I ain't no killer, but don't push me. You know, hey man, I know I got people who send me some square money. I will end you. Then that's just it. Zooms, zooms, but that's not zooms, a cool zooms. way to live. That's not the way you want to live. You want to live that, a and life. That's the, and, that's and, and, and that's oh, my peace. whole. That's my whole thing. That's why. I mean, quick side note. That's why I never jumped off, as, as they call it now. I don't know if they did call it back in your time. They. That's why I never jumped off the porch. I had a million chances to do it. But I never did it because I'm like, I don't, I see how y'all live. I worked in one of the most dangerous stores in the city of Chicago. Dudes used to have to shop with guns on them. And I'm like, bro, if y'all can't buy jeans without getting killed, these are, these are clothes. Yeah. Yeah. I used to talk to them. They'd be like, yeah, man, I had to circle this joint three times to make sure my ops went out. They, I remember they used to, like I said, quick side up, they used to park. Remember, in front of my store, there was, was a fire hydrant. They used to park in front of the fire hydrant to say, hey, you really get a ticket, man? Forget that ticket. <laughs> if I got to get up out of here, I got to get up out of here. So yeah. that's one of the reasons I never yeah. wanted. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't live. I'm, I'm I'm too careless to live like that. Like you yeah, have to feel you. I mean, me and you, me and you used to ride around just kicking it. Right, and like I'm, every, I can't then, do this all day long. Like right, I'm too right. careless. Like I'm not built to be. <laughs> yeah, man, stay on your P's and Q's. Why? <laughs> I don't want right, to do right, this. Right, I don't need no P's and Q's. <laughs> I'm good. I got no P's and Q's like. Oh wait, and, and I and I get exactly what you're saying because I've met some very very nice women. Who just had a, a nutty uh, baby daddy, and like you said, they grew, but the nigga did. Yeah, yeah, I don't avoid that. Yeah, 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 man. But and that's the thing, man. Growing up in the hood, you have that issue, you have that problem, and you run into those situations. Like, hey, hey, you know, like, dude, he's do a lot of talking. He he still ain't did nothing. He ain't gonna do nothing. And you no, know, whatever. So. It's just, but, uh, but even with that, here's the beautiful thing: as treacherous as Chicago can be, you know something else that works. If she actually moved herself out of that situation, because the one thing about Chicago, if you and your baby daddy live on 63rd Street and you move to the West Side, you ain't, ain't coming to worry about that baby daddy. You ain't coming to the West Side. side you ain't got to worry about that baby. Not, not that you ducking anybody. Not that you some cow with no chump. No, because uh, Chicago, because shoot them up, bang bang. Yeah, that's the beauty of Chicago. Shoot them up, bang bang. Is usually stay in the area they shoot oh, up. They, bang, they bang. usually don't leave their zip code. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not going over there to that west side. I'm not going over to the south side. The north side, they crazy. Then they crazy. And then most of them scared of white folks. So, all right. Yeah, yeah, now you got to just move to the other side. <laughs> I'm just move down the street. But yeah, yeah, it just it depends on the situation and. You must again. It's the old with communication. If you have over communication with anybody, things will be more successful than they will be if you are just hanging around willy nilly, acting a fool. But I would advise you, even though I've never dated anybody with two children, but that's not by design. Uh, but I would say, you never know the situation. You never know the situation, and when you get to know the person, I'm telling you, man. Inspiration comes from a thousand people. This, this, this is what your grandmama told me. You know, I thought I was cool at this point in my life, and the phone kept ringing. You know, at first my phone went from nobody calling at all, then the phone was ringing, 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 ringing. And then one day I was just like, oh, because I didn't know what to do now, right? 
Your grandma said, you, you tired of them little girls calling, huh? I said, yeah, a little bit. See, uh, you know what, Brian? Find one girl that you like, that likes you, and then you ain't got to have no more phone calls. And then BJ showed up. And then Bria showed up, and here we are. There you go. That's how I met your mom. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, your mom was, your mom was on the stuck up side. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. she watching. I know she there. She, you was stuck up. That's how you yeah, get. It. I've, I've heard. I've heard. Yeah, yeah, and, and she had a Jerry curl. I'm, I'm just letting it out. I know you know. Remember, she denied she had a Jerry curl. So I showed you that picture. Yeah. That picture was in Graham's house. Yeah, I know. She, Sean, I, was I, was the I showed you that picture. It was uh Sean and my uh. Yeah, both. The killer part about it is Sean admits it and then told me Tisha did it because <laughs> it's their graduation yeah. picture when they graduated from uh what was that Lincoln what was that Lincoln Park they graduated from what did they graduate from Lincoln Park they had their cap and gown on and it was it was the activator was on Sean in Sean hand <laughs> you, you, you you can see the picture from here like like what we had now. But if you just look play down, <laughs> you see that. The Jerry Curl activist and so is your mom. <laughs> but no, the the second part to the um to answer the question is to how my generation see it, they don't care. At all. Shoot at me. Not even with the what's name. It just number ain't really been a problem with nobody. Because I don't know in my generation, nobody just just they just don't care. <laughs> Hey man. And you know what? Sometimes that might hey man, you find somebody who down for you, man. Look, at this point in your life, man, you're 28 years old. You got to separate the riders from the hitchhikers. But I, to be honest with you, I'm not saying that in a good way. Like, oh man, we just no, they saying that because anytime they see it, we don't plan on dealing with this too much longer, no way. So hey, oh, they just trying, they just trying to be like Eddie Kendrick and have be intimate friends. Yeah, for a good time, not a long time. Right, good time, not a long time. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not saying that as oh no, they just we just free and we cool about everything. No, they don't care. As in, eh, let's see what it's go for a second. But this ain't going nowhere. I knew it wasn't going anywhere. But and hey, on that note, I'm out. Right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, man. Like I said, man, like. <laughs> I ain't gonna say his name, but you know who he is. We go to his house for fight parties, is all I'm saying. Uh, we used to call, I used to, me and Vince used to call Aunt 5K. Because he kept meeting these girls. Five kids. <laughs> 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 oh my God. So, hey, we used to call him 5K. So, you know, it, 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 it happens that way sometimes, man. I mean, you never know who you meet. You never know who's going to inspire you. A lot of sisters been in the chat room. Like, hey, you got this many, I'm out. You know, so, I mean, you, you don't want to deal with it. So, you're still in your twin days. And I thank mean, you for it's listening also, to me. It's, it's really also a personal preference thing, too, because what I can deal with, you don't have to deal with. That's that's the big misconception right there. That's one thing we ain't talking about. Like, hey, what you, hey, if you can handle 15, by God, do your thing, man. Good luck. Hey, there's a whole lot of link in that house, boy. Whole you said lot, what? Whole what? Lot of link in that Tax house. breaks, link. <laughs> Crab legs for everybody. Boils. <laughs> no. But uh, yeah, man. It just, just, just. I would say, don't put a limit on it. Find out what it is. See if you can deal with it. Then you move forward with that. So, yeah, I'm telling you, man, that judgmental thing gonna bite you in the behind. It has done me. Quite a few it times, but I, I, I mean, I ain't never met nobody with multiple children. So that that man, sometimes no multiple children, but sometimes I just judgmental feel like, thing, like, man. Don't he, do that. Don't do that. No, I you know, in those situations. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I completely understand. But man, and I'm not going against anything you're saying. But only reason I say but is because I want you to understand. It is a, but. It's a different breed of my. <laughs> I remember, remember the time, just to prove it to you, and I guarantee you're going to agree with me. Remember the time we was talking, and I told you what happened with Lil Mike and the girl? Yeah. Exactly. Just practicing. Yeah. Yeah. Or no, it wasn't, I was just practicing. It was, what was it? It was, 
I did it just for the hell of it. And I'm like, right. I mean, that was I was just pra- you know. I tell you, I, I, it was a. I, I don't think that was exactly it, but it was around that. But that's what I'm telling you what I, what I'm dealing with now. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. But you know what, man? The sad thing is, man. I hate to stereotype. But in the hood, we're dealing with a lot of people. Okay, being black, you already walk in the door with a whole lot of trauma epigenetically. Your great great grandparents had trauma, and your great great grandparents, great grandparents, and your grandparents, and then your parents, and then then you, you got trauma. You are everything and that are them good and bad and the traumatic situations that they've gone through, and that's just scientific, right? And then we added on this thing where people we add on the 80s. When people got strung out on these drugs, and a lot of people walked away from their children. A lot of people went, you know, like men, uh, men end up going to the penitentiary. This drug addiction affected women, and they walked away from their children because they were not, they were chemically imbalanced. So you had grandparents who were worn out from raising their children <clears throat> and, and watching your black behind. Now, now they're saying, grandmother got to watch this child with different elements in the world. It's a different situation. So these people, their children, are who you are working with right now. Right. If you were born in 1985, you're 35 years old. More than likely, you had a child at age 15, and now your child is about 20 years old, and then bam! And they run around here shooting these guns, they run out here looking, making it look like the entire environment is infected, and that's not the case. That's what, they, that's what you are shown. See, don't judge our community on the people who you interact with, because just maybe you in the wrong community, you interacting with the wrong people. And See, you me because that. what we'll do is, man, all we do is hurt each other because you always in the hood, Jack. Take your ass outside the hood and to int- int- integrate yourself into a, a, a different group of people and you'll get different results. You don't need to go to go only hang out with doctors, lawyers and engineers. That's not the key. But Get yourself with some progressive people who want better things, and when you integrate yourself with those kinds of people, you'll get better results in the, in the circle around you. I could have stayed on, I could have hung out with a bunch of the dudes that I grew up with, my first group of friends. I couldn't hang out with them, but look, most of those guys, most of those guys have have done a little time in the penitentiary. A lot, a few of those guys are dead, and some of those guys have either been strung and been strung out on drugs. Now. On the other hand, I start hanging out with people like Ant. I start hanging out with people like Sean, your uncle Sean. I start hanging out with people like Patrick Chris, Craig Gant, uh, 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 guys, Macy Hall, uh, Bud. I start hanging out with all those dudes. Only person, you know, a few of us are wildly successful. Craig didn't work in, in, in uh, government for a very long time. Stacy is a high end trader and things of that nature. But none of us is sitting on Peel Hill chilling with the with the Maybach and anything of that nature. And a lot of those other guys from the original neighborhood, they just doing exactly what they were doing in 1986. So it's just like, the environment thing as well. I get it, and I applaud you for teaching me that at a very young age. And that's why I that's why I know the city the way I do it. Because I knew that. You were from the West Side, but you lived up north, and you just immigrated yourself with a thousand different people. We used to ride around, and it used to be so cool that we can be on Halstead in 87th and kicking and getting some something to eat or something. Hey, Brad, what's up, man? Woo-woo-woo. I'm like, man, I'm from up north. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that time you was on 95th Street when you used to date that girl who lived out there by Richard. Yeah. And, and, and Ivan. Jumped out of his car and called me. Ha! Huh? What little Hob doing out here? I said, hey, I'm on my way. I'm on my exit away. <laughs> but no, I, I, man, I applaud you, Jacob. Man, I, and that's exactly what I used to do. And that's how I met Willie and them. Willie, uh, uh, Frankie, as well as Michael. All of us, because we were a part of three different areas of, of Chicago. Three different backgrounds. But we come together and come up with great ideas. Come up with uh, excellent um, investment tools and everything. Like, Frankie, honestly, no discredit to you. Frankie taught me credit. <laughs> he taught me exactly how to be what credit was, how to build it, how to get it, how to get business credit. Frankie taught me one of my homies. I'm like, how you learn about this? I like, mean, one day I just started reading and then I figured it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's nothing. You know what, B man? You've learned a lot from Vincent. <laughs> 
and Lil Vince used to talk to me. So yeah. it, uh, it's not about where you learn it from. That's the whole, it takes a village thing. See, people think, man, your parents are supposed to sit down and teach you. Hey, man, your parent, man, my mother prepared me for everything, including her death. She sat down and talked to me about the day she died. She literally told me, you know what? These are your grandmother's exact words. You know what, Brian? I'm not leaving you anything when I die. Because I'm going to teach you how to uh, handle your own business. And you're going to be a man and be able to take care of yourself. So men don't need inheritance. Women do because a lot of women may have children. If they have children, they're going to need a little extra money when I die. Now, if you have a daughter, I leave her something. But you and your son, this is, dude, You this is 11 years pre-BJ. Man, I, I, I understood I was, that because she she told me the same thing and told Peter and then the same thing because right. I remember sitting at her grave and they lowered her in and I and I look over at Peter and I say, "Hey man, nobody's supposed to get a cut." I mean, I know she said something. <laughs> she hey, nothing. Hey, well, that's one thing about your grandma. The sky is blue. Got the, the sky is orange. Damn it! If you look up, you just wasted some energy because it's orange. Trust me. When you damn it, it is orange. Me and Peter said, "Man, Peanut say, man, look, she ain't leaving us nothing." I mean, I know she said that, but she got no surprise treasure somewhere with our <laughs> name on it. Ain't none of that, Jack. If you, uh, if you a man, you ain't getting nothing. You yeah, get some information. Get nothing. Like, she like, told me that I ain't giving leaving you nothing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and that's the way she was. I mean, oh, uh, your TT said, Why do people waste their time with people who they know ain't on nothing? At a certain point, you got to know because people love people. I was just about to say, man, you took the words out that love is blind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you, you know, I, I got some knucklehead homeboys to this day. We don't hang as much as we used to, but they still my boy, you know. Man, love you don't get rid blind. of you, don't disregard people. You just, you know, hey, man, I can't spend that much time with you. I have a bill with you. And like yeah. T.T. Filler just said, you can learn from a homeless man, which I have, walking down the street with your Uncle Draz. We throwing back, throwing the ball back and forth with baseball glove. Homeless man said, let me see your glove. I said, here you go. I'm thinking, man, I'm going to whoop this chumpy runaway with my glove. He trash on my glove. He go, I used glove, young brother. I used to play ball when I was in college. I'm like, college? Nick, what? You still want to get you? You <laughs> <laughs> what? I learned then, hey man, you only one bad decision away, away, away from decision away from being in a bad situation. So yeah, you learn from any and everybody. So hey man, that's a good thing. Again, you you remember that come, you know, not trying to pat myself on the back, but that comes from me and your mother saying, if you ain't got no place to go, you need to stay in the house. Well, if you if you ain't learning nothing from people. Why you being around them? Why you kidding? All that is, man, that's the manifestation of that. You will see a lot of things, man, with your parents. You learn through you learn through trial and error. You learn because, hey, see, you had the blessing of learning from my mistakes, or from our mistakes, not from your own. Smart people learn from their mistakes. Wise people learn from other people's mistakes. And that's well, what you told me that a long time ago. She said, BJ, learn from other people's mistakes because you'll never live long enough to make them make them all. Yeah, exactly. Now, foul and hot. I believe it. <laughs> check it out. Teenage pregnancy. We just talked about baby mamas with fifteen thousand Terrans. How do you guys feel about teenage pregnancy? I don't know because <laughs> there's so many different answers for it. I just honestly that's when you send me the list of questions that was literally the only one I said to myself I don't even know how to answer this because people just they in my opinion one of the reasons I don't have kids is because or a couple of reasons I didn't have kids is because you laid some real responsibility on me when I was very young with a dog and I had to come out of my pocket with this dog. I could have been, I literally remember hating you because me, Lovins, then we was on, we was out west somewhere. I mean, we was out south somewhere. We was going on our way to kick it. And I walked the dog every day at about, maybe let's just say for instance, three, four o'clock. It's about maybe 1.30. I got time to come walk this dog. But I'm like, mm. I'm kicking it, man. I'm not gonna get and at the time I didn't have no car. I think I had a license, but I, I wasn't driving at the time. Or whatever the case may be, but I knew I was on the bus. I said, I'm not gonna drive all the way. I mean, I'm not gonna get on my take my fun day 
go all the way out here, watch this dog run in the circle, and then go back all the way back to the south side to go back and kick it with little Vince. Now. Or I gotta I gotta convince all, everybody who in our crew, hey man, y'all wanna go uh kick it with my dog? <laughs> no, <laughs> we got these girls right here. What you what you mean a dog? So one once that responsibility was laid on me, it was very, very hard for me to just say, hey, man, I'm going to just have a kid. No, nah, it wasn't working. No, nah. I know what it takes. I know when I got to clean my room, clean everything, and it's he finna, he say, hey, keep everything in the house clean. We'll out the bed. I'm going to give you $40 and get your hair cut. And then he didn't gave me the $40 for the week. And then he go, hey, buddy heartworm pill was uh, hey. I ain't gonna make you pay the whole thing, but you finna give me 20. Or you gonna give me 30 on this. You only gave me 40. <laughs> but in the other defense, the heartworm pill was only like once a month, but it's still like, nah. <laughs> I gotta feed them. I don't know. Well, slow down, slow down. I used to buy the food, chump. I had to help. It was you had to carry the bag. All you did was carry the bag. Still, man, it was a lot. Get out I don't of here. care, man. Actually, it was a lot. Handed the dog the food. I bought the food. Man, look, more of the story. <laughs> we ain't gonna go back on four for this. <laughs> more of the story. That was some. To be honest, that was some real responsibility, and it it didn't it didn't um deter. I, was, I was I was gonna say deter. It didn't deter me. But it definitely opened my eyes to something like, no, nah, this ain't something I want right now. Yeah. This is definitely not, nothing that, I want right now. That was part of the reason I got the dog. Believe it or not, I got the dog to show you, hey, I never said it, but I knew, hey, yeah, you're going to be out kicking it sometime. And you're going to be like, I'm gonna be like, hey, man, ain't nobody want this dog. And you're going to be, and you was going to cuss me in your head. And you're going to be thinking, God damn it, I hate this dude. And that's why I did it, for real. Because I've always said the easiest way to prevent a, 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 a teenage pregnancy is to give somebody the responsibility of a of a parent. And yeah, you, had to, you, know, said, right? you had to walk that dog before school, and you had to walk that dog after school. Rest you had to give that dog a bath. You had Rest to peace, Uncle Say, man. Huh? Rest in peace, Uncle Say, man. Yeah, hey, boy, he saved you a bunch of time. But man, I used to, I used to be like, "Look, man, let me get you a pack of squares, man." <laughs> yeah, yeah, my daddy asked, "I was here." <laughs> you already know, little B, I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what's up. But that's what it was. I mean, believe it or not, that was part of the thinking because I will, I will go to my grave saying, "If you have to stop what you have to do when you're a teenager." Until you 18, 19 years old, or until you go away to school, <clears throat> you ain't gonna want no baby because you know a dog is lightweight compared to a shorty. Because you can go away, you can walk buddy all day because you knew I was gonna come home and I was gonna be, re- re- uh, you know, working with him and everything. Some type of way. Right. But when you got a baby, you gotta come, you gotta go there, school, homework, back. Kick it, kick it, sleep, study, sleep, wake up, kick it, walk, you know, feed, cold, back to, you had to do all that. So I knew, hey, man, you you was like, man, we should get a dog. Really? (laughs) Yeah, we should. But my numero uno reason why I've never had a kid, I don't have a kid to this day, is because you and my mother. And that's me giving you my roses, me y'all y'all roses, because you, because you instilled everything in me to be a great father. Because I had a perfect example of one. But my mother, especially because she went perfect. My mother worked my entire my entire life. Remember, she oh, went kept perfect. kept everybody fed. Cousins coming over there, they fed. Friends coming over there, they fed. Every, she kept. She's the pinnacle of what you would call a mother, and I can't, and it's just so hard 
to find that right now. Either. She went perfect though. You keep saying that part. No, nah, she's real <laughs> close. She, they, her perfect was cousins. I'm, I'm here to tell you. We was, uh, hey, okay. We're not gonna we're not gonna get you typing up your mouth. Man, I don't even like your mouth. I don't remember the day we went home. <laughs> Everybody clothes was washed and in the morning. Not mine. Hey, sucks to be you. <laughs> that ain't your mama. <laughs> that wasn't your mama. Your mama. How about that? Your mama. How about that? <laughs> but no, nah, man. Y'all, man, I wanted I wanted that. I if I, I've always said my entire life, I want this example right here. I want it to be me and my wife to be on the same page. Y'all, it wasn't 100% the same page all the time because it was always, BJ better not watch no TV. Hey, turn turn the uh, cartoon real quick. What you doing watching TV? Look, my mama turned this on and I was just in the living room. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. I didn't turn to this. That's what she was watching. It just so happened that you know what I'm saying it was a superhero movie. <laughs> right. Yeah. So y'all but went she, on the page, and she hey, denied hey. that. As soon as you get off air, she gonna deny it. So hey, ain't no need. Nah, she can't deny that because I tell her the only reason I used to watch girlfriends is because I couldn't watch no T. I was in trouble and couldn't watch TV. So I said, I'm gonna take what I can get. <laughs> right. But uh, I just just always want to give that example. Like, man, this is the structure I wanted. This is the structure I want to give my child. And y'all got perfect examples of it. Like, it was it's just so many examples in my mind that, like, man, y'all was just great parents. And, like, times where I knew I could have got smoked for this. You was like, come on, DJ. I remember the first time I wanted to stay out late. And I was like, man, he ain't gonna let me do it. He ain't gonna let me do it. And you all, and I just some in my head say, he always say keep it real with him. So let me try keeping it real with him. I called you up. I had the car. I say, man, I know I'm supposed to be at home at uh, nine thirty, but man, me and Vincent, we kicking, we safe, we here. This is actually where we at. Can we stay out a little longer? You say, you say, you pause for a second. So I see you at eleven. Hung up. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, actually, I told you. To come get me at eleven. Yeah, you had my car. I said, "Come, tell your mama you with me." And then at eleven, you'll come get me, and we'll come in together. And it looked like and we, we and, and I didn't kick it all night. You didn't kick it, and we said <laughs> pitch. But nah, that that's just my example and me. Like with teen pregnancies now, though, it's just it's wow because it's so scary to me. Like the generation up under me, and even the people with me, it's like they had these kids. It's kid. I always heard this term growing up. These babies having babies. These babies having babies. I'm a, I, I, man, I, I work up the street from a high school. I see like pregnant 15, 16 year old walk past the window. I'd be like, gee, your mom, your grandma, was just, <laughs> that baby's grandma was just at the club with me. <laughs> I was just in the club with your mama. Like this ain't cool. Like yo, grandmama, this baby mama, man, he barely forty. I thought I remember. I remember growing up. I thought my grandma was at least eighty. <laughs> mama, yeah. I'm like, I'm, no, not, I might be over exaggerating with eighty, but. She was a grandmama. She was in the house, like not kicking it. Like <laughs> this lady, I'm like, oh, that's my grandmama. Like, all she do was go to work and kick it in the crib. She ain't got no life. <laughs> what a nerd. <laughs> I promise you. Nerd. I remember I seen as a kid, me and Bree had to use the bathroom, that picture of her in the bar. We seen her that day. Remember, you ever seen that picture of her? She yeah, was well, they, was that, they was playing oh, cards. We she from the real cards on Madison. Yeah. Yeah. We seen her. I'm like, what are you doing outside? <laughs> <laughs> you need to be in the house doing grandma things. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she hung out. She left the house sometimes. Nah, hey, you she couldn't have told me that. 
I just thought she had like like I'm like I just thought she had all the cool stuff in her house so she wouldn't have to leave the house. Remember, grandma had an iPod when that when that was amazing. Like yeah, she yeah. had the big iPod. Then she had the bold speakers around the house and she had a little bar. She'd be walking around cooking. I'm like, okay, this is what grandma was supposed to be doing, not in the club with me. <laughs> <laughs> not hey, the club. hey, look at it this way. Look at it this way. Your grandmama was a junior in high school with in junior and senior high school with two kids. <sighs> Couldn't have told you. what I'm telling you, man. It, you cannot. You can't you can't judge a book by its cover. Every every situation has a story behind it, man. So mm-hmm. don't like uh uh this dude I know, he was he was he but see the difference in him and you is you're half my age and he was saying it when he was 45. That's what's wrong with these little kids having kids and da da da. da. They ain't shit. I said, "Oh, well, I'll make sure I tell my mama that." I see you getting emotional. I'm like, "No." Nah. It's just letting you know you don't know what the hell you're talking about. So exactly, and I mean, it's not a my mama thing. So I understand and I know it's just the reality yeah, of the situation, a, man. I mean, if history tells you, if history tells you anything, you can you can learn from that. That like that don't judge a book bass cover. That age thing means nothing. Hey, Malcolm X is a crook, and this twenty a straight crook. <laughs> mm-hmm. So hey, man. I, I completely understand. Okay, for the last question of the evening before we shut this thing down, this is a trick question. What age should you have a baby? When you feel like you're ready? I don't think it's an age. Okay. Because I remember vividly remember you telling me like, man, like you, you literally just said this, you weren't playing and then I remember you vividly telling me, like, man, before you was born, it, it was it was about to go down. I was going to jump head first off the porch. <laughs> oh. I'm pregnant. All right, Ben. All right, go to uh, Cuban links. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. I was going to be Nino Black. Man. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to Van Roof. <laughs> Welcome to McDonald's, man. <laughs> so I mean, like, yeah, that is a trick question, but it's it's whenever you feel is right. Because a lot of there's no perfect time unless you got okra. money like okra. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, perfect no perfect time. time. I mean, I can openly admit I wish I would have been did it. This could get it out the way. <laughs> yeah, man. So I could teach my grandson how to break stuff. <laughs> I told you, boy. If you ever yeah, have to be your goal for years, teaching them how to break stuff. I'm gonna buy extra plates and shit. <laughs> so you're like, drop it. <laughs> Do that when you get home. And <laughs> tell them my granddaddy said it was okay. Because well, by the end, infants are have phones. Call me. I'm your like, <laughs> like, like that time when you found out that my mama was or grandma was equal to my mama. And yeah. you like say what? Why well, get you hurt around here? What? That's why I say. Do you know how cool I am with this lady? <laughs> right. Do you know how tight we is? I go to this lady house. She buy me everything. <laughs> I will get you hurt. But man, it ain't really no real d- d- deciding no. age, man. Because no. you might have all the money. Let's say when you 21 and you hit the Powerball or you become an NFL player or some ways, you know, you some type of uh, computer engineer, you make it 250, 300K a year, whatever the case is. You still ain't mentally ready. Yeah, I'm about to say, that doesn't make you a great parent. Cash don't, right, man. Right. Some of the best times and some of the greatest lessons I've ever learned from you didn't didn't cost a dollar. A dollar. So, yeah, that was really a trick question. With that being said, man, it's always good to rap with you. Rapping man, with always. H and B. And, uh, man, thanks for being on here as usual. You already know. You got some final thoughts before we tune no. out? No, I'm straight, man. No, okay. 
start giving people the benefit of the doubt. That's that, that's that, that's what I'm gonna take from this. <laughs> benefit of the doubt works, bro. Man. It works. It works. It works. Because man, look, everybody don't have what you had, and you don't have what everybody else. Had. So. If you, if you don't give people the benefit of the doubt, you're cheating yourself because you'll miss your beat. I'm telling you, man, you 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 will look at a situation and judge it, and just be like ah, ah, and then somebody else step up right into that situation and, and it's golden. I'm not saying that's with every situation. I'm just saying yeah. get to know situations, understand people, get to know people before you pass judgment on people. That's really the key, man. It's always good to talk to you. Next week is going well. In two weeks, we have another topic. Tomorrow night, me, Kev, and uh, Charlotte will be talking about alcohol. It's abuses, it's usage, uh, uh, and things of that nature. Man, we're gonna talk about that tomorrow at seven. I think it's six p.m. Six p.m. I think it's six p.m. Six or seven. It's just it's, it's, like y'all tune y'all ass in, man. Just tune in tomorrow. Hey, man, if y'all haven't, please hit the thumbs up button on Facebook. Hit the thumbs up button on YouTube. Share. Tell a friend and tell a friend to tune in. This is h B Wit. This is h and this is B. Salute to you. Salute to me. Thank y'all for tuning in. We will see y'all in two weeks. Two fingers. One word. And I am out. We lust for that cheese, we lose sleep, dreams of that clean, we killing our teens, they down for this American dream, them government schemes, they turning us to hustlers and fiends, we hustling trees, them politicians smuggling green, chasing that cheese, got everybody stressed in the streets, bottom me for speaking freely, let it breathe. Evangelists preach the congregations out of their seats. They writing them checks for tithes. Now it's people can't eat. She stripping for change for school. Now she giving them brains. She used to that loot. She earning. Now she giving them strain. He new to this game, but hungry, so he clicking his cane. He getting that paper, but then they gave him tools to the brain. It's rules to this game, but hustlers never hustle for fame. The spirit of greed is grimy, so we struggle to change. They put us in chains to take away our African names. But if we submissive and don't resist, then who do we blame? It's all a game, man. It's European staking they claim. They you a victim of the game plan. You thinking they ain't? You thinking they saints? Remember all them niggas they hang? Killed our women and our children. All our leaders are slain. They gave us Obama, but that nigga was hoping for change. But Zimmerman is killing niggas. Any free? Shit is crazy, babies having these babies and getting checked But keep the child from, they pop the rip his heart out his chest Our rappers was leaders and not in the booth and the dress Spitting bullshit and making more but giving us less They taking our sound and changing hours, dumbing it down They taking our jobs and homes and they shutting us out They taking our kids because it ain't a man in the house They locking us down, but soon they gonna be wiping us out They told our women they was too independent to need a man they Told our brother he was too insignificant to advance It's all a game, man, it's European staking they claim that you a victim of the game plan. You thinking they ain't? You thinking they saints? Remember all them niggas they hang? Killed our women and our children. All our leaders are slain. It's all a game. We are built for this network. For the strong, not the weak.